Number 19, Miami, taking on unranked Florida. Florida's got the toughest schedule in college football. Miami only they favored do. by three, according to mm-hmm. betters. And the over-under is 54 and a half points. What say you about this week one matchup, which it could be a blowout from either team or it's going to be a close one. I, I really don't see anything in between because we haven't seen these guys match up in a while. And even yep. with Miami with that number 19 next to their name, they're still a bit of a question mark. Grand Mertz with good. Florida is decent. It's good for take football. Off? Uh, it's good for football seeing Miami and, uh, UF matchup all, you know, y'all know that's my rivals, but it's right. good. We look better when they're good. Um, it just same with you as a Georgia fan, you know, Florida and Tennessee, if they're great, makes y'all look even better. Same with tech. Yeah. Um, yeah. 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 There you go. Uh-huh. Which, the road, which the road to the natty, you know, that used to run through the state of Florida way back when we know that. Um, yeah. but my thing is, this is Cam Ward's first game in the, not only the ACC, but for Miami. He's got mm-hmm. to play in some of the most hostile territory you can play. It doesn't matter how trash Florida is. Playing mm-hmm. in the swamp is hard. Oh, yeah. Wow. Griffin is no you joke. Here, and it's at noon. It's going to be hot. I don't because Cam Ward's used to that Pacific Northwest, you know, those Washington Huskies, the Oregon Ducks. Mm-hmm. He's not used to this uh-huh. SEC defense, this SEC run uh-huh. game. Um, yep. And Billy Napier's had a few years to get it, you know, get it right. Um, and a lot of people say he's on the hot seat, which, you know, this year, I, I don't think it's fair if you were to fire him if he struggled because they do have the hardest uh, schedule in all of football. It's not contested at all. Um, mm-hmm. I got the Gators here in a close one because it is at Gators. Ben Hilgris. I'm taking the Gators because look, man, me being a Noel fan, I and you being a dog fan, you know, you know how they get down over there. Um, yeah, you're not wrong. It, They'll shock yeah, the hell out of you. I think I think it could be close. Uh, I don't think it's a blowout. Uh, necessarily, because, you know, Miami's got some returning vets, but, you know, they got a lot of transfers as well. They were heavily active in that portal like we were. So uh, Billy's got something to prove, hardest schedule. I think they uh, – I got the Gators by seven in this one. Wow. By seven. By seven. I think it's 21-14. No more, no less. No more. Well, it could go – it could always go up, but – I, I think it's a very close game is what I'm trying to convey. Yeah. Yeah. Miami Just being favored by three. Loud it is. And then you've got Graham Mertz, who is a great quarterback. You know? Yeah. Yeah. I'll reserve the word great for a guy like Graham Mertz, but he could, he could come out and play great. I will give you that. He definitely could come out and play great. Like we've talked about with Miami, man. And as I'll continue to say, hats off to Mario Cristobal and the Canes as they recruited, transferred, and flipped what felt like literally umpteen athletes to stack this roster. Arguably the most stacked roster in the ACC when you look on paper. Mm-hmm. When you look at what Mario Cristobal has done with Miami, like we said earlier in the show, it is the most stacked roster he's ever dealt with. Absolutely. And Cam Ward is going to have to come to play. Again, because when you look at a guy that's got 7,000 total yards in his college career between the mm-hmm. couple of small colleges that he went to, and then you have, <clears throat> excuse me, and then you have him flirting with almost 50 touchdowns as well. You know, he's a very high profile player who transferred to Miami ahead of the year. Joining him on offense, you got a running back in Damian Martinez from Oregon State, Sam Brown from Houston at wide receiver, Zach Carpenter from Indiana, who's a center. On defense, there's defensive linemen from Louisville, Michigan State, Marshall, Middle Tennessee State, NC State, Louisville, Arizona, just a bunch of freaking commits and flips that they worked so hard with. And, and you know, it feels like Miami's got a guy at quarterback because you know he's dual threat. And and oh, this yeah. guy's a, you know, he's, he's a possible Heisman contender. I'll just go ahead and get out there and say it, and we'll have a Heisman list coming within the next couple of weeks. That'll really be a ton of fun to tackle. But, you know, my, Miami's going to look real interesting this year, man. And I think for them to take on Florida in week one, you know, I feel like some people are going to well, overlook you. this game. Yeah, yeah, it's it's, it's going to be a statement game, no doubt, at the end of the day, because Miami, at the end of the day, they're competing for the ACC title and a playoff spot. 
And with the college football playoffs going on to 12 teams, Miami's hungry. Yeah, Miami's super hungry, well and they just watch. All right, and they just watch number 10, Florida State, lose to Georgia Tech. It's one of the top contenders in the conference, already in a one-game hole. If Miami plays to their potential, it's not unreasonable to think that these guys could be in competition for an ACC title, for a playoff spot. I'm not going to go national championship, but we are talking college football here. We are talking that the transfer portal can can make a lot of things happen. And, and here's the thing, right? Miami, while they could have success this year, it reminds me a lot of those NFL teams that just – flip it in one year like the Bengals did and now they're always in yep. the talks and then like the Texans just did with a rookie quarterback rookie head coach you know CJ Stroud doing what he did winning the division 10 games and they won a playoff game but then they get smacked by the Ravens and rightfully so so it usually does take about two seasons three seasons before you get that playoff win playoff depth now you're in the Super Bowl. And, and Miami feels like one of those teams. Speaking of the Miami Hurricanes with college football, not the Miami Dolphins. Miami feels like one of those teams because they've done so much in the offseason and, and with the way that the transfer portal can work and just, again, with Mario Cristobal doing the things that he did, it's absolutely remarkable because it's, it's, it's just, it's almost just like you can plug and play in this day of college football, if you've got the relationships in place. And I think that's a big testament to what Mario Cristobal has done, is we know life is about relationships, dude, but with the mm -hmm. way he's been able to pull this off, absolutely remarkable. You asked the question of can they win in close games, though, because that was a thing, you not you specifically, but it's a question that some people had about Miami between last year coming into right. this year, because they're, they were four and six over the last two years under Mario Cristobal in games decided by one score or less of those four wins. Three of them came in overtime. One of those mm -hmm. being a quadruple overtime to Virginia in 2022. So the Hurricanes definitely <laughs> have to, you know, get some very, very key wins. Again, the fourth overall recruiting class of the 12 signees, 14 signees, 14 of them were blue chip prospects, which means they were either a four star or a five star recruit. You got a defensive lineman in Justin Scott, who's a contender safety in Zaquan Patterson, wide receiver in Josh is a trader, if I'm saying that correctly. You got the tight end in Lofton, the running back in Lyle. So a lot of these freshmen are going to be looking to get playing time because Mario Cristobal was probably handing out some promises. That that, mm -hmm. that staff and that offensive coordinator, they were handing out some promises, which is okay. That's what you have to do. You have to sell oh, yeah. in the transfer portal. That's why Miami was able to stack the number four recruiting class in the country. I'm going to take Miami to win this one. I know they're going to be on the road. It's going to be week one for them. But I feel like even if it's a Colorado type thing to where they just win their first few games and then skid on the back end, could be. Could they be like the Texans turning it around in one year? Could they be like some of these recent college football programs that have been able to turn it around in a season or two? Because it feels like Miami's got a lot of those – um you know, characteristics really to be able to make it happen. Score prediction. Again, we've got 54 and a half. I'm going to take Miami. I'll probably go 28 to 14, 28 to 17 on the road with a win over Florida. 